That's the watching TVC News at one. Let's turn attention to business now. Federal government is set to launch about 2,700 CNG powered buses and tricycles before May 29, when President Bolatinibu turns one year in office. Special advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Mr. Bayon Anuga, made this known in a statement to newsmen yesterday. Mr. Anuga added that 100 conversion workshops and 60 fuel in sight will be spread across 18 states before the end of 2024 to deliver compressed natural gas for mass transit. Mr. Anango assures that all is now ready for the delivery of the first set of deployment and launch of the CNG initiative ahead of the first anniversary of President Tinubu's administration on May 29. To ensure a smooth recapitalization process in the banking industry, the Securities and Exchange Commission is to issue guidelines to facilitate the capital raising process of banks in the country. The outgoing Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Lamido Yugoda, stated this at a virtual press briefing on the 2024 First Quarter Capital Market Committee meeting. He says SEC is partnering with the Central Bank of Nigeria and other relevant agencies to approve five infrastructure fund shell programs totaling about 1.5 trillion naira which is in alignment with the federal government's infrastructure development goals. He said the commission equally actively supported the growth of the fund management industry in 2023 with approvals for new mutual funds of 18.2 billion naira and discretionary and non-discretionary investment product of 17.6 billion naira. Elsewhere, the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service has seized about 35.9 billion naira worth of goods and intercepted about 370 trailers loaded with smuggled foreign parboiled rice over the past 30 months. Outgoing controller Hussein Ejibuno presented this report during the leadership transition to reincarnate controller Kola Oladeji. TVC News senior business correspondent Ifuna Yaisi has more. Even as he steps down as controller, Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Controller Hussein Ijebono reaffirms his commitment to battling smuggling. He highlights recent seizures in April, including vehicles, foreign parboiled rice, footwear, and bags, all in violations of Nigeria Customs Service laws. He emphasizes the consequences of bringing vehicles into the country without proper duty payments. Regarding illicit importation through seaports, Comptroller Ejibono warns against false declarations and non-compliance with import guidelines. They smuggle in the sense that they want to make financial gain. They smuggle because they want to maximize profit. So they will prefer to pay to Kotonu government rather than paying to us. And that is why we are charged to follow them bumper to bumper to have them arrested and bring them to justice. During the handover ceremony, Comptroller Ejibuno reflects on his tenure's achievement, recognizing the efforts of his officers. Incoming Comptroller Kola Oladeji pledges to uphold the services' commitment to trade facilitation. Successes recorded by the unit under my watch include improved suspension of smuggling by making more seizures and arrest of suspects to serve as deterrent to intended smugglers. Increased revenue recovery through meticulous documentary checks and issuance of demand notices on goods found to have been Anti-smuggling exercise, we must pursue it to the fullest. Revenue generation, we must pursue it. Then facilitation of trade, of the new trades, we must pursue it. A guard of honor marks the transition, with incoming controller Kola Oladeji affirming his unwavering stance against smuggling and commitment to revenue recovery. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Now, outside Nigeria, Asian stocks recovered some losses earlier today and bond yields rose as fears of a wider Middle East conflict fallout with investors moving back towards risky asset. MSCI's Brodex Index of Asia Pacific shares rose 0.83%, retracing some of the 1.8% drop 
from last Friday after news of the Israeli strike emerged. Pan-European stocks 50 features at 0.33% and FTSE features advanced 0.8%. Around Asia, Hong Kong Hang Seng jumped 1.94%. Australia's benchmark gained 0.92% and South Korea's Kospi climbed 0.82%. Japan's Nikkei added 0.56% while Taiwanese stocks slipped 0.05%. Mainland Chinese blue chips declined 0.18% in their first chance to react to news measures to promote overseas investment in China's technology sector. U.S. stock features added 0.2%. 31% following is 0.88% drop for the S&P 500 last Friday. To rate the ongoing economic recovery, China left benchmark lending rates unchanged at a monthly fixing in line with market expectations. The one-year loan prime rate was kept at 3.45%, while the five-year loan prime rate was unchanged at 3.95%. This loan prime rate fixing come after China reported encouraging first quarter economic data, which removes the urgency for Beijing to release monetary stimulus. Meanwhile, a weakening Chinese UN and falling net interest margins have continued to constrain the easing effort. With the first quarter gross domestic product growth exceeding the annual target of about 5%, market analysts and traders expect the policy stance to remain unchanged at the upcoming a poly bureau meeting. And Tesla has caught its prices again in several major markets, including the US, China, and Germany, as the electric car giant faces falling sales. The move comes after a sharp fall in its global vehicle deliveries in the first three months of this year. The firm has been slow to refresh its aging models, while rivals in China, such as a BYD, and in Neo have been rolling out cheaper models. Chinese smartphone maker uh, Xiaomi also launched its first electro electric vehicles last month. This has resulted in a price war intensifying between electric vehicle makers with competition coming from Chinese firms. In a post on social media platform X, formerly Twitter, the CEO of Tesla Motors, Mr. Elon Musk, says Tesla prices must change frequently to match production with demand. And in the crude oil space, prices fell earlier today, dragged down by a renewed focus on market fundamentals as Israel and Iran played down the risk of an escalation of hostilities in the Middle East after the Israeli strike on Iran. And while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell to sell at $82.35 per barrel, with a downward price review of 0.95%. Brand crude features also experience a downward price of 1.24%, selling at $86.21 per barrel. And Bonnie Light recorded the price decline of 0.05%, selling at $88.69 per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers offer $87.35 per barrel with a downward price margin of 2.55%.